Hi everyone, this is Brian Hayes and welcome to an introduction to the blues for flute. Today I'm going to focus on the simplest form of the blues, that's the 12 bar blues. We're going to look at which chords make up the progression for the simplest of the 12 bar blues formats and we're going to play a very simple but famous melody that only uses two lead notes against the three chord progression. To start with, let's get our mind and ears around the sound of a 12 bar blues. I'm going to put up a screenshot of Band in the Box, which features a three part jazz trio, jazz piano, jazz bass and jazz drums, all acoustic instruments. And have a look on screen as the band plays through two choruses of a 12 bar blues. You'll note the progression only has three chords in it and that bars 1 through to 12 are duplicated on the repeat through bars 13 to 24. Check out the blues now on screen and through your speakers. Did you notice that only three chords were used? C, F7 and G7. How do we determine which chords to use in a 12 bar blues once we pick the key that we want to play in? Well, it's pretty easy. Today we're playing in the key of C major and the three chords come from the first five notes of the major scale. So in the key of C on the flute, those first five notes are these. So C, D, E, F and G. Now the blues only uses the chords built from the first, fourth and fifth notes out of that scale. This is in its simplest form. There are very complex forms of the blues. We're just keeping it very basic today. So the first note we played was C. That's where the C major chord comes from. If we harmonise a C major scale in three part harmony, C is in a space, therefore we go next note up in a space, next note up in a space, which will be C, E and G. A C major chord. The fourth note in the scale, C, D, E, F, is on a line if we play it up high. The next two notes on lines if we play up high are A and C. So F, A and C make up an F major chord. Finally, the fifth note is G. G is on a space if we play it up above the five ledger lines. The next two notes that are in spaces are B and D. So G, B and D make up a G major chord. So fundamentally in a 12 bar blues in the key of C major, you will very likely strike a C chord, an F chord and a G chord. To keep it interesting in the background for the band, in this example, I've given the F and G major chords an extension and made those F7 and G7 chords. That won't impact on what we want to do here today on our single note instrument, the flute. It's most important that you get a feel for how long each chord appears in the 12 bar progression. If you wind the tutorial back to the on-screen illustration, you'll note that C major was held for four bars, followed in this case by F7 for two bars, followed by C major again for two bars, followed by G7 for two bars, and ending with C major for the final two bars in the 12 bar progression. That is the most fundamental of chord changes in the basic blues. Now today I want to get you playing a melody against the 12 bar blues progression. We're going to use Duke Ellington's famous C Jam Blues. This was written in the 1940s. Ellington is regarded as one of the most legendary of the composers and big band leaders in the entire history of jazz. He wrote very complex music and orchestrations, but in this wonderful example of the 12 bar blues, Ellington only chose two notes 
for his melody. G and C, these notes. Now the melody for C Jam Blues basically sounds like this. Da da, da da, da da, da da. And then that repeats another two times. That's the melody. Da da, da da, da da, da da, repeated three times. And of course, those notes on your flute, there's two G's. You can hear there are only two pitches, G and C. But listen, try and work out how many G's and how many C's. Da da, da da, da da, da da. Now, if I play that on the flute. You get a very simple, repetitive melody. But have a listen how great that melody sounds when we add in the band in the background, in this case the jazz trio, supporting us as they change the chords. I'll put on the music score that shows the notes in traditional notation. Remember we're playing in jazz timing here, so those quavers are swung. Da -da. It's not two, two, they're not equal value. The first note is longer than the second in jazz quavers. Just play them as I'm singing them. Da da, da da, da da, da da. Have a listen and look on the screen. This is traditional music. Grab your flute, either the piccolo flute, the concert flute, or the alto flute. On the alto flute, the two notes will be C to F. On the piccolo and the concert flute, the two notes you need are G to C. On the second repeat of the chorus, I actually double track myself playing piccolo flute. You'll hear the piccolo coming out of your left hand speaker and the alto flute, the G flute, coming out of your right hand speaker with the concert flute staying dead in the middle in the stereo mix. Check it out now. Were you able to play along on your flute with the music score and my demonstration track? If yes, you would have felt how amazing it sounds when the chords change behind you, but you play a constant melody. The chord change makes you sound great as the lead player, yet your job is very simple. Just in this case, playing two different pitches and letting the magic of the 12 bar blues chord progression make the overall sound exciting and interesting. Just about every famous jazz legend from the 1940s through to the current time has performed and or recorded their own version of Sea Jam Blues. So don't underestimate how powerful this simple little exercise is in understanding how to become a better musician. I hope you've learned something new out of today's tutorial. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye for now.